So I got asked a question last night um, about the new um, Niner gravel bike, full suspension gravel bike, 29 gravel bike, which has dropper post, disc brakes, and full suspension. It does still have drop bars, but it also has ETAP as well. So I don't know much about this, uh, so I'm going to be making assumptions at best and ill-informed at worst. So you have to forgive me. But this whole conversation really is, is just a, a discussion about semantics and, and uh, different genres of bicycles. So if you want a good in-depth technical dissection of it, you can stop watching now. If you want to be reasonably entertained while I kind of muse on the philosophy of bicycles, then this might be for you. <laughs> anyway, I digress. I digress a lot. The, um, the, the, the trend for gravel bikes is, is, is one that's actually of interest to me. One, because probably because I'm getting older and the thing, things like bike packing start to sound interesting to me. Um, I, I never really got in with like the Surly Brigade and, and that kind of thing. You know, the, the kind of guys I'm talking about, they've got big beards and carry hip flasks and yeah, I'm making sweeping generalizations, but this is all going to be a sweeping generalization. Really wasn't for me. The part of mountain biking that I've always loved is the extreme element of it. So it's, you know, it's always been like downhill and free ride and slope style poorly, dirt jumping poorly and uh, urban sort of free ride poorly. Although, once again, tangent, I've been talking to my friend Chico and he's moving to Paris soon. And I, I'm obsessed with going to Montmartre where all the steps are and we'll do a shoot there. Anyway, I digress. To me, a gravel bike or adventure bike is something um, that, that I wouldn't have held interest for me before. But it, I, I'm surprised that it doesn't, because adventure is something pretty much that has been a, a facet of, of my life, it, it, especially in terms of books. A lot of books that I've been interested in reading when I was younger have always been about great adventures and travel, from George Orwell's Down and Out in London in Paris, you know, to lots of expedition books about Hillary and stuff like that. I always saw myself as kind of an explorer, but it's never really drifted into my spot. I've never really combined the two. Um, when I was, how old was I? When I was about 17 years old, maybe 18, um, I drove a Hero Honda motorcycle around Nepal, and I liked that. That was really good. Um, but I've never, I've never, I've never ridden a bicycle out that way. But one of the key things that you you learn. When, when you're traveling, which I've been privileged to do, is, is that you need to pack simply, robustly and lightly. So when I first stumbled across gravel bikes, adventure bikes and that sort of thing, it, only fairly recently, it kind of clicked and I thought, do you know what, it might, it might be nice to kind of, especially as I'm kind of trapped in a digital world a lot, you truly have an excuse not to be. And it might be nice to escape that and kind of get, get a, a, a pack together and go and ride. Now, my friend Jim is obsessed with it. He, he, he rides huge distances. I believe he's rode um, coast to coast in the US. It was, um, I can't remember, the Great Tour Divide. And he's obsessed with that. And I can understand why. It's some beautiful things. So what... So when I think of a gravel bike, I think of something that's incredibly simple and reliable, and low maintenance and, you know, capable of road and gravel travel. And I, and I saw the new one from Niner and I just like went, <coughs> like honk like a goose because it, for me, it's as far away from that as possible in that it's a seeming, seemingly um, endless barrage of, tech that would impede that very experience I, I would you take a solar charger to charge your e-tap 
what happens when your dropper post inevitably breaks? Because man, I cannot get a dropper post that doesn't break. I don't know why my, my office chair works just fine. <laughs> um, maybe I have to develop that. I, I talked to Cornelius at Intend and I said, we should make a dropper post together. And he went, nope. <laughs> well, he just did nope, but in German, which is nine. Um, so I, I see this because complex tech and, 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 and one part of me, the partition of me, the, the techie part of me is like, <sighs> because I see these like glorious technological advancements and it's like the most modern thing, you know, but it's like the 29 inch wheels and disc brakes and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, we've just managed to make a really poor geometry cross country bike. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> I'm I'm conflicted because half of me wants to 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 love it, and when I think of things like Grinduro, I think, well, oh, that's the perfect bike for that, you know. But for actually gravel and adventure riding, I can't think of anything that's further from you know further from what it should be. And I know uh, uh, there's no point. There's no point in me just trash talking. I'm really not. I'm I, like because part of me loves it and the other part just despises it and thinks like why can't humans just do the thing properly why can't we just behave ourselves and and i'm guessing that niner have made it to push the envelope as far as it can go and it's an opinion piece and a talking piece as well we're talking about it so maybe it's a good marketing choice as well but what do you think about when you think about gravel bikes i think about like simplicity there was um I, I love um, Seb's Cranked magazine. One, because the photojournalism is so vast in it. There was this, um, I'm gonna make a mistake here, but I, he was traveling around loads of former Soviet states. And it was the, the absolute specter of wanderlust. You know, I felt like I'd kind of, I needed to be, you know, exercised because it had inhabited my body when I saw it. And I imagined myself sleeping rough on the rocks under the stars at night and, and 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 just putting in massive distances and there just being that cultural shock. And of course that's a pretty privileged middle class white person thing to do. Oh I want to see what it's like. You know, I I understand that kind of, you know, thing can be distasteful to some people. But I think that, that travel is one of the, the great levelers and I think it's hard to be a like hard to be a bad person if you've travelled a lot. At least if you've experienced what other people have. So this excitement about, you know, the travel. It's it's made me made me want to try and at some point in the near future make like an adventure bike. And I and it made me think sit and think, what would it take? What what would an adventure bike entail when I think about it really like a real gravel bike and I come up with some really kind of conflicting thoughts like because I think that 26 inch wheels would be perfect for it right now stick with me on this because you're gonna be like what but 26 inch wheels on an adventure bike because they're the most commonly used wheel size around the world and you'd need spares I think you'd have to have a rigid fork and a rigid frame. And and now, and I'm definitely conflicted on the next part. One part of me says that it must have a pinion gearbox so you've got a great range of gears and it's reliable. The other part of me is like, if it breaks, there's absolutely no way of fixing it. And then I thought, and I had a thought on this, that you could carry or mount on the frame the two Olsen bikes bottom bracket converters. So should you ever get into the space where something goes really, really wrong, that you could replace it with something. Um, something like the Swiss Army Adventure bike, you know. And I think it's got to be rigid and you've got to be, you've got to be simple and straightforward with it. So yeah, the only compromise I'd say is I think that probably having disc brakes is a good idea, but just have mechanical disc brakes, pinion gear set, or a roll-off hub or something of that nature, you know. And I think the 26 inch wheels would probably be a good standard, but if, if you were more knowledgeable about road bikes, what would you suggest that you used? You might just make a one-off just to see how it goes, you know. Um, but I, I had a lot of success 
with with single speed bikes. I, I get on with them quite well. And I think <clears throat> if it wasn't for the distance that you'd go on a gravel bike or adventure bike or whatever, that it would, you know, it would become tedious, especially when you've got heavy packs and stuff like that. You're trying to climb things or you have long meandering road sections. And the thing you forget about on the road is the wind is horrendous sometimes. And you don't know, you don't know a bad day until you've ridden into a headwind for 10 hours. Um, of course, of course, I say I haven't done any like travel things, but I have done long, long distance riding, you know, and I've done sort of 50 to 100 kilometers a day off road riding things. And you, you do know about it. It does get quite draining quite quickly, but that's only for a couple of days. Imagine if you do it for weeks. But anyway, like I said, discussion piece, not, not really anything. So sorry if you expected something more exciting. Um, and I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. Is the future of road bikes full suspension, dropper posts, disc brakes? Is this where, where we're going? Is that, I mean, it's innovation. So is it, you know, road motorcycles have suspension and discs? Will road bikes go that way? I doubt it, but I'd be interested to see it. It's a little thought for you on your Wednesday before I go to work. As always, a pleasure spending time with you. Thanks, Lucas.